Hi, welcome you all to the lecture number 14 of the course title Psychology of Emotions Theory and Applications. So, we are discussing module 6 uh, which is about uh, group emotions. So, module 6 uh, we have two lectures, we have already covered lecture number 13 and today is the uh, lecture number 14. So, before we talk about uh, today's lecture, let me give you some brief recap of last lecture. So, we have discussed in the last lecture that you know in the context of emotions in the group, uh, there are two aspects of emotions that we can discuss. One is group emotions which basically means when collectively as a group experiences an emotion because of a certain context like somebody as a group is watching a match in the stadium. So, collectively a group of people is experiencing certain emotions which may be a joy or it may be anxiety and so on. Now, in the context of group there is another aspect of emotion which is uh, that individuals can experience emotion on behalf of a group. So, it is not collectively they are experiencing, but because of some, some, some aspects of the group, uh, the individuals who has a sense of belongingness to that group can experience emotion on behalf of that group. So, if that group in which uh, to which the person belongs is uh, for example, you know some achievement has come to the group obviously, the, the person may experience the feeling of proud and so on and the opposite can also happen. So, these are called emotions on behalf of the group. So, in the last lecture we are uh, specifically focusing on the group emotions. So, in that context we have uh, discussed some historical background which included uh, some of the research by uh, Gustav Levon, who was one of the first person who talked about crowd behavior and he also used the term group mind. So, which basically means that when people are in a crowd or in a group, people generally the individual lose their sense of individuality and a collective or a group mind emerges which could be very different from the individual minds and people may behave very irrationally, impulsively. Uh, primarily uh, one of the reason behind this is that people uh, lose also sense of responsibility. There is a sense of diffusion of responsibility in the group behavior. So, people are not feel individually responsible for what they are doing because of the collective identity, which may lead to lot of behavior which they individually might not do. We also talked about the ideas of Durkheim, who is a sociologist, who also talked about collective consciousness in the group setting. You know gives a context for you know members to experience and express emotions. He also talked about uh, various rituals and symbolization in the group that also kinds of unites people and kind of shapes and facilitates emotions. Uh, MacDougall who was also British psychologist who also talked about uh, people kind of you know group mind emerges when they are in the group setting primarily because of the instinctive nature of human mind which wants to kind of connect with other human beings. And he also talked about uh, you know uh, social uh, emotional contagion which is uh, uh, one of the main reasons why how, how emotions spread within the group. Then we discussed this concept of emotional contagion in detail which basically means that emotions and the associated behaviors can kind of spread from one person to another persons. Uh, through various conscious and unconscious processes which we have discussed in detail. Uh, this emotional contagion is one of the reason why group kind of experiences shared emotion. This could be positive in some sense because it also it kind of helps people to bind together and work together for collective goal. It could be also negative in a sense particularly when the negative emotion spreads lot of conflicts and uh, negative consequences could also happen. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last class. So, today we will be talking more specifically about emotions on behalf of group. So, it is not in collective emotion, but individual emotions, but this emotion is arising not for a personal reason, but because of the membership or sense of identity or sense of belongingness to a particular group. So, we will be talking about uh, some of the aspects of emotions on behalf of a group. We will be also talking about emotion about other groups. When you kind of have a sense of belongingness to a group, there will be others also who will be members of some other group. So, sense of how emotions also play about when we kind of categorize people who are insider to your group and who are outsider to your group. 
in that context we will be also talking about the concept of stereotypes and prejudice so let's start so uh, as we have already kind of mentioned emotion on behalf of a group refers to experiences of feelings and expressing emotions that are not just individual in nature but are also tied to one's identification with the larger social collective group so it's not the origin is not your individual life but it's uh, it's not just individual in nature but mostly it is about your identification with collective and larger social group that kind of leads to leads to uh, certain emotional experiences so this could be your connect connect uh, your your sense of identity with the community cultural group or a nation a social movement an organization or any other kind of group so this group could be a small group it could be a large group to the extent a nation so we also kind of identify with our country so when our country does something good or some our country progresses or does something good we as a fellow men of a country feel proud about our country so that is an emotion that is we are experiencing because of our sense of identity with the nation so if nation does good we also feel proud about it so that is something an an example of emotion on behalf of a group similarly this group could be your society your cultural group it could be your whatever no so this, there could be a small group it could be very large group so when individuals perceive themselves as a part of group they can experience emotions from the group perspective so the moment you identify with a group you will have emotions connected to that group also so whatever group does ups and down of the group will kind of influence you as a person and accordingly you will experience emotions so emotion on behalf of a group can arise even when the person is alone so it's no it, it this is where it is different from the group emotion group emotion means collectively everybody is experiencing together here you can experience it alone but it is arising from your identification with the group so that's the main difference is indicating that experience is not a collective emotions or a group emotion that we have discussed in the last class but it is emotion that is felt for the group because of your sense of identity so here are some of the examples so individuals for example some of the uh, studies found that individuals who are not alive during world war 2 have reported feeling guilt on behalf of their country is here uh, it is talking about germany as a country because of the atrocities it did to many you know uh, individuals and so many historically so many atrocities have been done by this country so it has been found that individuals so many individuals who were born after that they were not part of that whole atrocities but they still feel sense of guilt on behalf of their country for which they are still considered as a member because of their sense of identity with the country that their country did something bad so they still feel guilty about it so that is an example of emotion on behalf of a group similarly in one study it was found that australian participant who had not personally committed any act against indigenous australians so indi- indigenous people uh, who they themselves have not done any atrocities against them or any kind of uh, kind of uh, committed any act against those people but they express guilt on behalf of their country as a country when it did something bad for their indigenous people they feel sense of guilt even though they were not part of that whole atrocities for the wrong committed against the group so uh, it is coming from their identity with that group the notion that group membership determines emotion has been a long standing concept a lot of research has shown that individuals experience pride or shame based on the success or failure of the group some of the examples we have already seen for instance cialdini and colix in uh, 70s 1976 also kind of in their study demonstrated that american university students were more likely to uh wear their university athletic clothes or apparel after the victory of their team than after the loss so when their team kind of in the university setting team was uh, victorious in certain uh, situation uh their uh, students of that university Uh, were more likely to wear the apparel or the clothes of uh, basically of their university after the after the victory as compared to when they their university lost in a particular game setting 
So, just because it gives you a sense of identity that they are team own and uh, this is sh that particular cloth wh which is an which is an indication of that they, they belong to this university. Uh, it is kind of showing a sense of proud pride by wearing that. So, in addition people tend to use pronoun we more often when describing a team victory. So, in the context of victory people use we more as compared to when they loss and they experience positive or negative emotion on behalf of the team. So, so, collective identity becomes much stronger when in case of something positive happens. So, the degree to which an individual experiences emotions for the group it all depends on the level of identification. Th this is very important. Not everybody will equally experience emotion on behalf of the group. It depends on your sense of identification. How the stronger the identification, the stronger will be the emotions on behalf of the group. So, it all depends on your sense of identification. So, if you are very strongly attached to your cultural group or whatever group you belong to, so whatever happens in that group will be very strongly influence you as an individual because of your sense of identity comes from there. On the other hand, for example, another person who is not very strongly identified with the cultural group or the society in which it belongs, probably that person finds sense of belongingness in something other. So, it may be more superficial. So, whatever happens, it may not impact that person more. So, the sense of identification is very important. How strong the identification is, accordingly the emotions will also be experienced. So, research consistently demonstrated that emotional response on behalf of the groups are more pronounced when group members is personally significant means you are very strongly identified and there is a sense of my group, my identity is associated with it. So, a lot of research very clearly shows that sense of identity is very strongly determinant of the emotions on behalf of the group. So, emotions on behalf of a group can motivate collective action. So, that is something uh, we can understand very clearly, which refers to coordinated effort of a group towards a common goal. So, if you have a very strong sense of identity with the group and you have a very strong sense of emotions on behalf of that group, you are more likely to kind of be motivated for working towards that group goal. So, that motivation will be much stronger. For instance, in some of the studies like when uh, Zomeren and colleague found that college student who felt angry due to an increase in tuition fee uh, that affected the entire group were more willing to engage in the collective action opposing to the decisions. So, so when the tuition fee was increased uh, as a group everybody was influenced and when the person student who also felt angry because of that on behalf of that group. Uh, they are more likely to engage in collective action when that group collectively oppose that. Moreover, a match between an individual's current emotion and the emotions of the group members can increase the individual's sense of belongingness and willingness to participate in the collective action. So, if something happens and you also experience a particular emotions and that emotion matches with the group emotion, obviously you are more likely to work towards that group because your emotion and the group emotion is very similar. So, collective actions participation is, uh, is more likely to happen. So, about uh, emotions on behalf of group, events that affect a group and its members can elicit emotion on behalf of the group and it is much more stronger if one identifies very strongly with the group. Such emotion can motivate individual to take action that they may not take in the absence of this group. So, these emotions even though it is uh, individually experienced on behalf of group, this can motivate individual to, to take actions for the collective goals, which they might not individually have done if they are not part of that group. So, these are some of the important aspects associated with emotions on behalf of the group. Now, sometimes this concept of emotions, group emotions and emotions on behalf of the group can also lead to uh, certain emotional experiences about other groups. So, when you are a member of a group, particular group, there may be many other groups. So, there can be emotions generated because of your own membership of a group towards the other groups who are different. So, this group emotions and emotions on behalf of group can be directed. So, towards other groups. So, many time in our real life we have seen 
the collective emotions or the group emotions that is experienced or whenever we experience emotion on behalf of the group, these emotions may not be just contained in that group or that individual itself. Many times those emotions are directed to the other members of the or other groups which are different. So, which you do not identify with that group. So, that means, so that is that is the meaning of other groups. So, interaction between members of two groups. So, people identify with one group and they do not identify with another group. So, that becomes other group. Most of the time this is this is the situation of inter group setting can lead to diff intense emotions like anger, hatred, fear, especially when there is a conflict. So, this group emotion is directed towards other groups. So, lot of practical settings such exp uh, such emotional experiences also should be understood in the context of group emotions. So, if you, if, if you read uh, news reports and uh, frequently we hear a lot of uh, reports about incidents of violence between two groups, uh, riots and those kind of thing are very frequently heard. So, these are instances where you no know, heinous crimes such as you know mistreatment, murders, attacks all these kinds of thing happens between members of two groups. This is these are some of the instances where emotions of a, in the group setting is directed towards the other group members. This contact between groups always create a context for intense emotions particularly when you know there are some issues which are conflicting and this may influence behavior towards one group and the other group. So, it influences behavior of people in both the groups whenever there is a context of intergroup uh, kind of uh, setting. So, we will explore some of the ideas uh, associated with emotions when it is generated in a group context and it is kind of directed towards the other group uh, uh, particularly the concept of prejudice we will be discussing in the rest of the lecture. So, there are two concepts uh, which are very important when we talk about expressing emotion towards the other group. This is called as prejudice and stereotype. Now, stereotype is something uh, is a more at the belief level, more at the thought level when uh, we have a simplified or some kind of widely believed ideas or generalized belief about people, group of people or things. So, when we have some kind of generalized belief without really verifying we have some beliefs about people, some other people or some other groups of people. So, those are called stereotypes which may not be true because these are kind of generalized beliefs. So, because of certain instances you simply generalize that people of these groups are like this without really looking that there may be many individual differences and so on. So, these are like most likely uh, like beliefs are often assumptions, certain assumptions we have about people, other people or group of people, uh, preconceived notions and most of the time such notions or ideas may not be accurate. So, these are like uh, mental shortcuts that help individuals process information quickly and they can also lead to bias judgment and reinforced biases of cons or misconceptions. So, just without really thinking and doing detailed analysis you simply say these people are like this or that person is like this because of some preconceived ideas. So, it is more like you are using a sh mental shortcuts without really analyzing things and um, just to process information quickly sometimes we use such kind of shortcuts. So, stereotype is one such shortcut that people take you know and uh, this may be biased or based on some misconceptions. For example, people have some ideas like women are not good at maths and science as men. So, this is a stereotype, this is general belief based on some of the observation people have kind of belief for example, women are not good at math, mathematics or science as men. Older people are not technologically good or something like that. So, this may not be accurate in every context, but people have these stereotypes. So, this this is the an example of a stereotype where 
you have a generalized belief about other people or a group of people based on some preconceived notions which may not be true. So, those are called as a stereotypes. Prejudice on the other hand often involves negative feelings. So, prejudice is more deeper in a sense it includes not just belief or thoughts it is a more it also includes feelings and attitudes you take towards certain individuals you know. Stereotype even may be just a thought a certain beliefs that you have and prejudice is more about your you have a strong feeling towards the other people or other individuals or certain attitudes that you take uh, which are biased which may be biased and it can lead to discrimination unfair treatment. So, most of the time prejudice kinds of you know can be evident in the actions of the people. So, it is much more deeper and it involves emotional feelings and attitudes. For example, one can be holding a negative view about someone solely because of the religious belief. Okay? So, you just simply collectively you know you see a person simply because you know that person's religious identification or belief is about some other religious belief. You have all kinds you may have very negative attitude towards that person without really judging or analyzing that person. So, that is an example of a prejudice. So, you have a negative feelings towards that person simply because without any other kind of information because of his uh, belongingness towards a certain religious sex religion or something like that. So, this is not just a belief level here you are kind of having negative feeling and attitude towards that person. So, that is a prejudice. So, a stereotype is a generalized belief about a group while prejudice is a negative or positive mostly it is a negative attitude feelings or judgment held towards individuals or a group based on certain preconceived characteristics. So, that is the basic difference. So, prejudice often stems from reinforced stereotypes sometimes it can arise from the stereotypes, but not necessarily all stereotypes will lead to prejudice. Some stereotypes can be just some mental things it may not actually turn into a feelings or attitude. So, these are some of the more detailed differences between stereotype and prejudice just in a tabular form. So, stereotype is a widely held oversimplified generalized belief. So, it is more about belief or idea. So, it is not more at the thought level of a particular group of people or things. Prejudice is more about attitudes and emotions. It is more it includes attitudes and also emotional feelings towards the other groups and typically negative and not based on actual experiences or knowledge. So, typically negative attitudes are mostly under prejudice. So, it is more cognitive means thought mad thought level it is more emotional or affective because it includes your feeling towards the person attitude toward that person. Stereotypes are based on generalizations. So, you see few people let us say few people in certain contexts behaving in some way and then you say whole group is like this. So, that is the meaning of generalization from one or few individuals you are generalizing everybody are like this of that group. So, that is what is called as a generalization often rooted in cultural and society perceptions certain perceptions based certain things are there. Prejudice are typically negative judgments or feelings directed at a particular group without proper justification. Okay. So, again the difference is more at the emotional level. So, examples of stereotypes we gave already some examples like all engineers are good at maths, women are not good at leadership. So, these are all examples of stereotypes certain belief people have based on certain experiences few instances and it can be generalized to everybody. Prejudice for example, having a negative attitude towards people of a certain race or ethnicity without knowing them as an individual. So, so a lot of such preju prejudice and stereotypes can be there in our mindset. Stereotypes can lead to biases, but may not necessarily result in discrimination. Stereotype can lead to some biased behave behavior in biasness in some behaviors, but it generally do not have very deeper impact like this uh, like you are discriminating people in the real life or something or having very bad attitudes towards a person. So, generally stereotype may be more superficial at the thought level may not actually translate into real action in most of the time, but uh, prejudice often leads to discriminative behaviors. If you have are prejudiced towards a people your action will reflect that your behavior your emotion will be visible in that. 
So, as they involve negative emotions and attitudes that can influence actions. So, stereotype can contribute to formation of prejudice, sometimes stereotype can contribute to prejudice because you have some stereotype when it is reinforced again and again it may turn into prejudice, but not necessarily all stereotypes will do that. So, prejudice can sometimes typically rooted in some stereotypes, uh, but not necessarily in all the context. Uh, stereotypes can be changed uh, much more easily through education and exposure, but prejudice often requires much more deeper processes because it can be it can involve emotions and so on. <coughs> so, we will talk about little bit more about changing prejudice. So, if you look at the difference between stereotype and prejudice, the foundation of prejudice is actually at the foundation of it is the emotions. People have negative or feelings associated with it that makes it much more stronger in terms of and it and it it is reflected in the behavior also much more than the stereotype. So, the foundation is actually emotion. So, the prejudice is commonly understood as a negative attitude. So, that is directed towards the out group as we have already seen. It is often fueled by the emotion on behalf of one's one, one group. Whatever emotions you feel about your group that is that can be directed to other people. So, often it is fueled by the emotions that people have about themselves or about their group that can be directed to other. Studies have shown that global negative feelings are better predictor of people at people's attitude towards social group than the specific content of their stereotypes. So, in the prejudice situation it is the emotion that is the most strong strongest predictor of people behavior people or people attitude towards somebody. So, it is the emotion that determines. So, if you have a very negative emotion about somebody, so prejudice the extent of your attitude towards them will be determined that negative emotion determined by that emotions much more than than what you believe about them. Your belief may not really you know uh, influence your attitude much, but your emotions can be a much stronger predictor. For example, you know, Jusim and colleague uh, 1995 conducted an experiment in which participants were asked to rate likely level of mental illnesses of some hypothetical individuals. So, it was like a uh, study experimental setting where some hypothetical group were given and they were asked to asked to rate the level of mental illnesses probably found among this group. One group was more positive like rock performers, rock singers and another was little bit more uh, another was a negative group like child abusers. So, these are two social categories they are given and they are asked to rate to what extent the mental illnesses are likely to be there in this group. Now, this mental illness ratings were in that research found that it is predicted by the participants emotional feelings about these categories rather than what they believe about them. So, people have emotions about certain groups and this will determine what will be their attitudes and what kind of judgment they make about them rather than what they just believe in their thought level. So, that emotion is more stronger predictor. So, what is the link between prejudice and emotion? Prejudice how it is linked to emotion? So, there could be some possible link. Prejudice may be influenced by an individual's emotional response to stereotypical beliefs about an out group. So, prejudice is linked to emotion primarily because uh, prejudice itself is influenced by individual's emotional processes. So, if, if person has a certain stereotype and it is kind of fueled by certain emotions, it may turn into a prejudice. So, for instance, if you have a negative stereotype about a group such as you know you think that group is an arrogant, selfish or stingy kind of people, it may elicit negative feelings towards them. So, if you believe or have certain uh, negative or stereotype about a, part, a particular group of people like say if you think these are very arrogant people or maybe an individual also. So, this belief sometimes may elicit negative feeling also. The moment you say somebody is arrogant, it may be associated with certain emotions also. It may lead, lead to certain or stimulate certain negative emotions because people do not like arrogant people and this resulting emotion may form an overall prejudice. So, this emotion may fuel and turn this stereotype into prejudice. So, this is how emotion could be connected in the stereotype and prejudice cycle. 
Number two, another way how it is connected is that it is also possible that an individual's current emotional state sometimes just because you are feeling in certain ways in the present circumstances, current emotional state increases the likelihood of stereotype congruent features coming to mind or memory, which determines the positive or negativity of the stereotype content at least momentary and ultimately person's momentary prejudice towards the group. So, sometimes we may be experiencing certain emotions which may not be connected with the group itself simply because you are feeling bad or angry for whatever reason. This current emotional state can stimulate certain memories which are congruent to that emotions. So, if you are feeling angry in the present stage which may not be actually because of other group, but simply because you are feeling angry, this anger can can stimulate memories or increases the likelihood of certain congruent stereotype congruent features coming to your memory or mind. So, you may let us say in the certain other people or other members are there of a group that anger may help you to recall more of negative thing about that particular person or particular group of people because you are simply angry. So, anger will stimulate informations which are related to negative uh, instances. There may be many positive things associated with that, but you will not remember those things at that moment simply because anger will uh, stimulate congruent information, similar informations which are uh, at the past you also felt angry about something. So, that memories or that information will come to your mind because of the present emotion and it will determine the positive or negative stereotype content momentarily and may lead to momentary prejudice towards the group. So, it may not be any reality in the present context, but simply because you are feeling certain emotions that may stimulate certain increase the likelihood of getting access to certain memories which are congruent to that emotions. So, if negative emotions negative information will come to your mind. So, when you feel negative emotions, we also tend to recall all the negative things in our life. At that moment positive thing never comes to your mind. So, if negative things comes to your mind about the other people. So, you are more likely to experience negative emotions towards them in that context which can turn into a prejudice. So, that is the what is the whole idea how emotions can play a role in the prejudice. So, for instance, if you are in, in the negative emotional state when you encounter a member of a certain group, you are already in the negative emotional state, your current emotional state may influence your stereotype of that group. So, if you are feeling negative, negative stereotypes will come to your mind. These people have done like this earlier also some negative things will come to your mind because you are feeling negative at that moment. So, your stereotype will become more negative and this negative stereotype may develop more negative feelings towards them and once feeling develops that becomes a prejudice and you may likely to discriminate these people against which may not be you know accurate in many context. Some research also shows that you know some specific emotions are associated with prejudices, not such a general feeling like negative feeling and positive feeling. In certain contexts, there may be very specific emotions are can predict prejudice, not just general negative positive feeling. So, in st uh, some researcher says instead of focusing on general uh, negative or feelings, uh, research suggests that prejudice should be defined in terms of specific emotions towards uh, the out group. Sometimes, the specific emotions, not just negative, if negative, what specific negative emotions? that will determine the prejudice much more better as compared to generalized emotions like positive and negative categories. So, Cottrell and Newberg in 2005 found that although participant had similar negative feelings towards in a study, participant had similar negative feelings towards these groups of people African Americans, Asian Americans and Native Americans. So, they all have negative feelings towards these groups of individuals. So, broadly, but their specific emotions towards theirs are very different. So, overall in the broad sense all negative feelings, but specific emotions were very different for each of this group. For each of these groups were very different. For example, the participant felt more fear towards African Americans. So, the negative may be there are different emotions. So, fear was associated with this particular group and pity was towards the Native Americans pity, they are feeling more pity towards these Native Americans 
and fear was more associated with african americans so both both and both could be considered as a negative but the specific emotions are different so this specific emotions actually predicted their attitude actual attitude or feel uh, or pol whatever policies they relevant they were kind of advocating towards that group so this the more we know the specifics of the emotions more we will be able to better predict the their attitudes and judgment towards that particular group in terms of whatever so it is much, much better predictor so other studies have also shown that specific emotions can predict attitude towards policies when make policies people make policies about certain group of people so, so this this specific emotions actually determines lot of this content of this uh, attitudes or policies that people make at the governmental level maybe or at the group level and so on for example such as disgust towards gays and lesbian in some of the study show that predicted their attitudes towards gay right policies so if people have this specific emotion of disgust towards these people gays and lesbian it was kind of evident it ad, is kind of predicted their attitude towards gay right policies when they were making kind of advocating certain policies and anger towards arab muslims predicted attitude towards homeland security policies so this this emotion was more predicted towards this group of what the policies they were making and this emotion disgust was better pred, uh, kind of predicted the policies related to gays and lesbian in certain studies that was found so specific emotions can kind of give you much clearer idea how people are actually taking what attitudes so research has found that this implicit prejudice towards out group is heightened when people are induced to experience emotions that are consistent with the stereotype and threat associated with the group so this prejudice become much more stronger when whatever you uh, know they induce certain emotions which are consistent with the stereotype of that group so if some people have positive attitude towards a group so if then this uh, the uh, prejudice towards or prejudice towards that group will be more predicted by that positive attitude at the same time or it becomes much heightened or or similarly when this uh, prejudice towards out groups it becomes much more when people experience similar emotions which are predicted by the stereotype so if they have negative stereotypes towards some groups then uh, it becomes much more stronger uh, when uh, when in terms of their behavior if it is consistent with those negative attitudes in the stereotype content for example feeling angry but not disgust increases negative prejudice towards arabs okay so in a different context studies were done so this was feeling angry was kind of uh, increase increase the negative prejudice towards the arabs not the other emotions while disgust in that context not the anger increases prejudice towards gays and lesbian so so this was more again as we have already seen so this specific emotions uh, were more predictor of a prejudice towards each group over although that may be negative but specific emotions were more stronger predictor so it becomes heightened when you have a similar prejudice and emotions associated with that stereotype so if st stereotype is negative or specifically the anger associated with it that feeling angry will increase the prejudice so like this specific emotions can be taken into account to understand the prejudice in much more stronger way and much more detailed way so that's the whole idea of lot of this research now the most important question is that you know because prejudice has a lot of practical implications in our life uh, especially when we lot of intergroup settings groups we are all belong to different groups and contact between two groups is bound to happen in our practical life in our social world in the organizations also people have different group settings where people can become member of one group and other may become member of other group so this group sense of group 
is very much evident in every aspect of our life and this prejudice can really create lot of conflicts and negativity and uh, may be the reason for suffering in the real world so it is important in the from the practical perspective that we should re reduce prejudice as much as possible to increase the harmony in society or harmony in our life uh, so this impact of prejudice could be very dangerous in various contexts of our life so it's important that we also kind of look towards the reducing prejudice so how what can be done to reduce pre prejudice in different contexts so the impact of emotions on intergroup relation may appear bleak and negative so most of the contexts we have found prejudice leads to negative consequences so from this understanding whatever we have understood about the prejudice what can be done to kind of reduce pre prejudice so if we have kind of recognize that prejudice is a significant cause of failed intergroup relationships most of the intergroup relationship become failed or full of conflict because of one of the reason could be prejudice and it is largely driven by emotions and prejudice at the center of prejudice is the emotions that we feel for the other group so the intervention can be done here at the level of emotions for the out group so if negative emotions are or more specific negative emotions are responsible for prejudice if you if you can increase or work on the factors that promote positive emotions towards the out group it can reduce the prejudice so we need to change the emotional balance of intergroup relationships so prejudice happens primarily because of the negative emotions associated with the out group member and so if if you if you can work towards the factors that are, can increase positive emotions for the out group member then prejudice will automatically decrease so how that can be done some of the uh, literature says some of the strategies to enhance the positive emotion are like making more intergroup content contact in a more controlled setting not like you know contact can happen in the conflict setting also but more opportunities if we get to kind of contact and talk to people of the other group then probably we will know more about them many time prejudice happens because we don't know much and we have some generalized some misconceptions and assumptions about people and we work based on those assumptions so a lot of prejudice and stereotype happens because of that so more intergroup contact it provides opportunity to, to know and understand each other thereby reducing misunderstanding and misconceptions so the best way to reduce this prejudice or increase positive emotion is to know more so if you know more people will know that lot of the stereotypes and uh, generalized beliefs may not be right because people may be very different in that group also so connected to that is also obviously education is something very important to know more here it is at the conceptual level so appropriate education is important role it can play for reduction of prejudice particularly racial prejudices in the historically if you see lot of prejudices have happened for certain racial groups in different countries like you know in the us context blacks were always kind of uh, prejudiced so as education happened people knew more about them more about the understood the negative impact of racial prejudice so more and more information people got more and more education people got those racial prejudice slowly slowly decreased so education can play a very important role obviously then cooperation in the context wherever there is possible that two groups come together and cooperate together to kind of work towards a goal such kind of cooperation also gives an opportunity for reducing negative emotions and promoting positive emotions sometimes even witnessing an out group member experience discrimination can also let us un can understand that you know that certain members of other groups are experiencing discrimination without any of their fault uh, sometimes witnessing that you are not directly involved but you witness that people are discriminating against this group because now you are not emotionally involved you can just understand that it is not right so sometimes witnessing also can change your perspective and uh, the way you look at it uh, the way you experience emotionally all this can also change and can turn into more positive emotions so these are some of the things which possibly obviously it needs the larger coordination and effort 
a lot of um, cooperation from different sides. Uh, however, if these opportunities are given more and more, uh, the in the prejudice context, more positive emotions are likely to happen, and it can turn prejudice into kind of at least at least decrease or diminish the prejudice, if not completely eradicate. So, studies have shown that positive emotions sometimes can mediate the relationship between intergroup contact and prejudice, meaning that positive emotions resulting from intergroup contact can lead to reduce prejudice. So, that is the only way because negative emotion causes prejudice, positive emotions can reduce prejudice. So, whatever context can increase the positive emotion is the solution for reducing prejudice. This positive emotion also increases individuals willingness to engage with members of the out group. So, if, an, if I experience some positive emotions towards some out group member, it will increase po possibility that I will kind of engage with other members and cooperate with them. Furthermore, recent research also suggests that an increase in positive emotion could be even more effective in the reduction of intergroup anxiety in this process, uh, more effective than the reduction of intergroup anxiety in these processes. So, one way of reducing kind of conflicts or prejudice is that you reduce the anxiety, simply resolve the conflict or another way is you work towards the positive emotion. So, research shows increasing positive emotion is a better strategy than reducing just anxiety between the two groups on some somewhat. So, that intervention seems to be much more kind of um, effective. So, with this I uh, will stop here. So, these are some of the things about group emotions that we have discussed in both the group that emotions can become very strong, it becomes amplified in the group setting and it can lead to positive consequences or negative consequences depending on so many things. Uh, so, group setting always gives a context for emotional experiences and it, it can be much more amplified in the group context. So, this is the kind of gist of the message, uh, gist of this uh, whole uh, group emotion and understanding of this concept. So, with this I will stop here and uh, we will talk about some other things in the next module. Thank you. Mm -hmm.